Greetings, math people of YouTube. This is your boy Kamal once again with yet another very cool inic roll. Not just an inic roll, it's a double inic roll. We have the double integral from 0 to 1 of 1 divided by 1 minus x times y minus y squared dx dy. So what exactly should be our line of attack? Well, we're integrating with respect to x first, meaning that we're holding y constant. So we might as well expand using this factor of y minus y squared. And what exactly is the utility of that? That will become clear in a moment. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 divided by y minus y squared times the integral from 0 to 1 of negative y minus y squared divided by 1 minus x times y minus y squared dx dy. So in the numerator, we have a function of x. And in the denominator, we have its... Oh wait, I said that the wrong way. In the denominator, we have a function of x, and in the numerator, we have its derivative. So that means we have a logarithm. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 divided by y minus y squared, and on integration with respect to x, we have logarithm 1 minus x times y minus y squared, with the limits for the x variable being 0 and 1 dy. Now, evaluating these limits, we have the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 divided by y minus y squared times the logarithm of, as x approaches 1, we'll have 1 minus y plus y squared minus the logarithm as x approaches 0. We just have log 1, which is, of course, 0 dy. So that means the target integral i is the integral from 0 to 1, and I'm going to write the denominator as y squared minus y just to get rid of that negative sign. And upstairs we have log y squared minus y plus 1 integration with respect to y. The obvious thing we could do is factor out y from the denominator. So we would have integral 0 to 1, and downstairs we have y times y minus 1. But what about the numerator? Is there anything we could do to it? Well, of course, we could just multiply it by 1. That works out perfectly fine. And we can expand that 1 by 0. What I'm trying to say is we could write this as 0 plus 1 times the logarithm of y squared minus y plus 1 dy. And how is that even useful? Well, it's not useful yet. But if I take the version of 0 that is y minus y, that would be useful. And I also have a plus 1 here. And that means I could write this as y minus y minus 1. And now this is quite useful because if I expand the numerator by distributing the multiplication, then I could get a couple of integrals with one factor removed from the denominator. One, one integral would have y in the denominator and the other would have y minus 1. Then we could deal with a few transformations. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So expanding the numerator, and of course using the linearity of the integration operator, we have the integral from 0 to 1 of log y squared minus y plus 1 divided by the y cancels out, so we have y minus 1 dy, and then we have another integral, minus integral 0 to 1, log y squared minus y plus 1, and in this case, the y minus 1 cancels out, so we have y downstairs. Okay, cool. So we have the same numerator, just a slightly different denominator, but the limits of integration are, again, both 0 and 1. So we might as well try a few transformations here. Let's see. We'll take this integral and write it as integral 0 to 1 of log y squared minus y plus 1 divided by 1 minus y with a negative sign outside. And of course, I could do something here. We have 1 minus y times 1 minus y, correct? Yeah, that's exactly what we'd get. Okay, cool. Now let's try a transformation by letting 1 minus y equal t, which implies that negative dy equals dt. And as y approaches 
0, we have t approaching 1, and as y approaches 1, we have t approaching 0. So the limits are switched up, and that means we have negative integral from 1 to 0, and of course switching up the limits gets rid of the negative sign, so it's again an integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 minus y here would be 1 minus t, so we have 1 minus t times t divided by t, and the differential element transforms into negative dt. Okay, cool. So isn't this exactly what the second integral was? So we have integral 0 to 1 of log t squared minus t plus 1 divided by t dt, which is exactly what we have here, which means the target integral i equals negative 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of log t squared minus t plus 1 divided by t dt. The integral we now have is pretty straightforward. All we need is some algebraic manipulation for the argument of the logarithm. We'll write this as negative 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of log Okay, so we have 1 by t times the logarithm of t squared minus t plus 1, and I'll expand using t plus 1. So that means in the numerator, what I'll get is t cubed plus 1. So we have negative 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by t times the logarithm of 1 plus t cubed divided by 1 plus t dt. And now using the properties of the logarithm, we can write this as the difference of two logarithms. So I have negative 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus t cubed divided by t dt minus the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus t divided by t dt. So that means we have a couple integrals now to evaluate. We'll call this one here i sub 1 and this one i sub 2, and the methods to evaluate them are pretty similar. For i sub 1, we'll make use of the series expansion for the logarithm function, whereby we have log 1 plus t equal to, terribly sorry about that, the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times t to the k divided by k, and this is of course valid when the absolute value of t is less than 1, and this is valid for both t and t cubed on our interval of integration. So we replace t by t cubed. So we have t to the 3 times k here. And applying the series expansion gives us i sub 1 equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by t times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times t to the 3 times k divided by k integration with respect to t. We'll take this factor of 1 by t inside the summation operator, and we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times t to the 3k minus 1 divided by k dt. And we switch up the integration and summation operators, taking out the negative 1 to the k minus 1 term. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k, because these two are independent of the t variable with respect to which we're integrating. And we have integral 0 to 1 of t to the 3k minus 1 dt, which is pretty straightforward. Integrating gives us the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k, times t to the 3k divided by 3k with the limits being 0 and 1. And now as t approaches 0, of course we get a 0, but for t approaching 1 we get 1. So what we have is 1 by 3 times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k squared, which we recognize as the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 2. So we have 1 third of the eta function at 2. And the eta function at 2 gives us a value of pi squared by 12. So this implies that i sub 1 equals pi squared by 36. Okay, cool. And 
And by using pretty much the same techniques, you can evaluate the integral for i sub 2, and you'll get i sub 2 equal to exactly pi squared by 12, that's a to 2. So combining our results, we have the target integral i equal to negative 2 times i sub 1 minus i sub 2. So we have this thing here. And what exactly would be the result? We have negative 2 pi squared, right? So that's negative 2 pi squared by 36. The negative signs cancel out. And you also have some nice cancellation here meaning that you have a 9, which implies that the target integral i equals quite nicely pi squared by 9. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram, and in case you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting my content on Patreon. All links in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.